oh, back here, Bluegrass Bushcraft. Been um, checking out the antique stores here lately, watching for uh, woodworking tools. Got a few scores I'd like to share with you. Some of y'all might know what that is. It's an old uh, type of a tenon cutter. Blade right here. It's in decent shape. It's missing a little um, thing here you can loosen it up with. Well, what you call it, kind of like on a handle of a vise, you just turn it. Ain't no big deal because, I mean, I can use a wrench on it to turn it. But that will uh, adjust the size of the tin in your cutting. And, um, camera's not going to pick them up. It's got measurements on here of how deep you want to cut. It's missing the, uh, should have had a little stop, like a little clamp that went in there. You can stop how far you want to make your cut. But I mean, that ain't no big deal. I mean, I can I can mark it with a piece of tape how far I want to cut into. As far as that goes, I can put a little wooden plug or something in it to stop it. But, um, pretty good shape for its age, I guess. Don't have much in it. Plus, pretty neat score. Right, another score. It's really old. It's the uh, curved draw knife. A little bit of flexibility into it. Good for carving out some really uh, good-sized bowls. I mean, it's plate bowl. It might be a big bowl, but medium, large bowl. Which I'm planning on making a bowl trying to at least that's the plan I think that'll clean up pretty good edge is pretty decent on it a little surface rust but should be able to clean up pretty good handles are old but still solid and last in the woodworking tools I got a old girl hide and mallet a good deal on this, just a buck. Found one identical to it in another booth. They wanted $20 for theirs. And, uh, good raw, raw head mallet, though. They're good for hit, hit stuff hard and not damage it. Good for draw, driving in wooden dowels or anything you don't want to beat and bang up. That'll do the trick. Oh yeah, that's the main reason I was making this video, I almost forgot. So, I got these back out, as you can see back in the day, still the original box, but back in the day, some point in time, a very long time ago, this set sold for $5.80. Please don't ask me what I give for it today. Anyway, this is... I was tickled to find this, brand new, still in the box, never used. Alright, I got a Miller's Falls carving tool set, number 106. These are a carbon steel. Seem to be a really high quality. Made in Greenfield, Massachusetts in the USA, so they ought to be some high quality tools. But I was tickled to find these, new, never used. Got a set of six little carbon, carbon tools. There's the one I like the most, the little spoon gouge. And uh, like I said, don't ask what I get for this set now, but um, I went to a local woodcraft store near where I work, and um, it's comparable for what they sell today. And uh, I 
definitely didn't give the five dollars and eighty cents for them, but uh, it definitely wasn't a deal of the day. But uh, I was tickled to find them. I mean, I would have given the same, probably more, for a set made in Switzerland, which Switzerland makes some pretty good carving tools. But um, I'm tickled with them. They seem to be a really high quality set. So, uh, I knew it, these, so I'm not sure what uh, they're called. No, the camera's not picking them up. That's kind of a little, comes to a little sharp point, a little V, v gouge of some kind. Kind of like the spoon gouge, just a half circle lock. It's kind of the curved flat gouge, good for digging out. That's just a straight, flat, wide gouge. And an angled gouge. Again, I'm really tickled to get these. All right, now for you campers and bushcrafters. Picked up this um, old Polish canteen. Pretty cool little canteen, and you all know I like my canteens. But I really like this. This really large mouth on this thing. Look at that. Really nice shape. Got a nice cork gasket. Place the wood, take out that screw and that plate. Really clean on the inside, don't look like it's ever been used. Don't have a cover for it, but that's a cool canteen. Couldn't pass that up. Next, well, you all know what this is. It doesn't have a burner with it, but I have my aluminum with a burner. I think I'll take the burner off of it and put it on here. It's a Swedish Army mess kit. Stainless steel. Thought that's a pretty good score. Once again, very clean. Don't think it's been used. Got a few little scratches on it from storage, chipping. And, but, uh, Stainless steel ones are a little more rare and a little more expensive. I got a good deal on this, I think. Picked it up for $19. So, uh, I was really tickled to find that. Last. I was really tickled to find this. Don't know if it works yet or not, but I'll try it tomorrow. Hopefully I got a good one, don't have to do no work to it. But if I do, I do. I mean, it should take much to get it going if it don't work. I don't think the camera is going to pick that up. It's the Coleman Peak One. Comes with a little Canadian pot gripper. You got the stove. Nice little square pot. Coleman Incorporation, Wichita, Kansas, USA. Got the little fold out legs on it. And I've pumped it up, it does pressurize and hold pressure. So hopefully tomorrow I'll put some fuel in it and it'll fire right up. I really like this. Never seen this feature before. Got this little plastic ring on the bottom that slides back and forth. And what that does is it adjusts to the leg. If you're on, got it sitting on the ground, if it's not level, you can adjust the height of that leg of uh, how it folds up there. Well, that's a pretty cool feature. I really like that. I mean, you know how hard it is to keep your stove level at them when you're out camping and sitting it on a rock somewhere on the ground. I mean, there's nothing level out in the wild. So that's a pretty cool little feature. I really like that. 
just wish me luck tomorrow when I fire it thing up and hopefully she'll fire up first try. Alright, thank you all for watching.